In this lesson we will cover some of these guys here under this menu and uh, we will cover this Mo instance, Mo text and tracer object. So let's begin with this Mo instance. This guy really creates a trail of clones in time from a certain object that uh, it references. So we have to have a initial object for it since uh, it doesn't work by itself. So let's create maybe a, maybe a sphere. We will scale it down maybe like this and we will load it here under object reference. And now if I press play here and uh, move this guy, I will get very interesting effect where these guys are really creating a copies of themselves in time. Let me stop this. One thing that can uh, really bother you is that this guy, this original sphere is visible. And if you hide it in the viewport and uh, press play and try to play with your instance, then uh, that instance also will be gone. So that's a little bit of a problem, but uh, it can be surpassed by adding this guy, this original object to new layer. Once it is added to new layer, you can simply hide that layer and uh, press play and that instance will still be here. So this is just a little bit of a workflow issue, nothing else. Apart from a very interesting trailing effect, you can add effectors to that Mo instance object. So there are some effectors that really don't work good in conjunction with this uh, Mo instance, but some of them work really well. So for example, if I load a step effector, now you will see that this guy is loaded here. If I press play, that Mo instance will simply be scaled in steps over time. What is interesting, you can uh, have a lot of fun here, maybe play with this history depth value. This is just the amount of clones, so to speak, which will be produced with this uh, Mo instance object. So that's uh, very interesting. One thing that will most certainly pop to your mind is to put this guy under a cloner. And uh, if you do that, you'll notice that you have no effect. It simply won't work. And uh, that could be perceived as a little bit of a problem, but uh, instead of trying to clone the Mo instance, which has this sphere referenced, you would rather want to reference the cloner itself. So let me show you a really nice setup you can create with uh, this Mo instance guy. So just to clarify from this Mo instance point of view, it really doesn't care what is the object reference. So it will pretty much turn anything into instance. I hope that makes sense. So let's now maybe get rid of this guy and uh, we will create a cloner setup, which we will then instance to get some interesting results. So let's create a cloner and uh, we can use maybe, a, let's say a torus object. We will scale it down to roughly this size. And let's put that guy under a cloner. We will set the cloner to radial mode. We will use 10 clones and the radius will be 100. We will align them differently. So maybe like this, maybe even a little bit more of a space here. Let's go with 200. And we can of course uh, rotate this as we find the uh, suitable and uh, maybe frame this a little bit. We can also create a material for these guys. So let's load the simple color here. Let's say this one. So it's just a little bit more interesting and uh, not so dull with this dull gray color. So now in this Mo instance, I will load a cloner in this slot. So the complete cloner will become instance object. I will also hide this guy by creating a new layer and simply under layers, I will turn off the visibility. Now this guy is all we want to work with. So let's rotate this guy like this, maybe pull it a little bit upwards. 
and uh, we will add this material to this instance object and we can actually hide this cloner and torus from the object manager okay, but uh, torus has to be also the member of this layer so now we will get rid of this guy so always do everything you can to avoid clutter in your scene now if we press play nothing spectacular will happen but uh, let me show you how you can use effectors to create a really really cool effect so let's maybe load a step effector and uh, you can see what happens once uh, the time begins from zero so actually we could uh, lower this and go into a negative direction maybe and uh, now let's leave it at one but uh, we will reset this spline so it's a uh, completely linear and under layers we'll stop this it's kind of uh, distracting i will enable the visibility in the object manager and we'll just for a second empty this reference because i want to create some modifications on these guys also in my layer manager i have to enable this visibility so now this guy i will be able to scale it even a little bit more down and uh, once i do that i will once again drop the cloner into the object reference slot because uh, you can really create uh, certain problems where you don't get the size propagated properly so once you hit play it all settles as it should be we'll once again hide these guys also from the object manager and uh, hit play to see the results so this is really cool and uh, it really is an interesting effect now let's even in the step effector play with this other parameter maybe we will add a rotation here so let's try something like this and uh, this is a really really cool effect now with MoGraph you always want to think out of the box so use everything else available in Cina 4D to create interesting effects let's go a step further i will add a vibrate tag to this guy so vibrate and uh, i will enable scale so i think this frequency will be too much so let's give it a shot like this and uh, i will lower this to one like this and enable regular pulse and disable relative so how about that you can have fun with this uh, MoGraph stuff and create spectacular results. Uh, this is pretty much impossible with uh, standard tools. And uh, for example, here in the step effector, you can load maybe a different spline. And uh, I'm sure you cannot see that, but I'm loading a sine wave here. So we have a different behavior. If you load a different spline, so Let's maybe add a cubic spline. You will once again have a different behavior. So lots of possibilities there. And uh, this is why I was telling at the beginning of this training that you really have to have a good overall knowledge of Cina 4D because uh, to utilize MoGraph completely, it is really essential for you to, to have that basic solid knowledge. Otherwise, uh, Achieving full potential with MoGraph is uh, simply impossible. So let's hit play and uh, take a look what we managed to create with a few simple clicks. I will stop this, go back and uh, we will in fact delete all this and uh, we will take a look at our next generator which is this Mo text. So for all text related things that you want to create so logos and uh, stuff like that this mo text is absolutely the tool for the job so let's frame the scene and uh, maybe type uh, mograph here so it's a little bit more interesting and uh, one thing that you can notice immediately is this axis guy and you control the position of the axis by this align option so 
let's put it to the middle so we have this guy in the middle so once you hit h or uh, maybe frame all those letters will be really in the center this guy is really similar to this text spline so if you understand the settings here then this will be no problem for you one thing that makes it so special is ability to load effectors for complete object just lines words or even separate letters so let's firstly create some interesting color here maybe this one and uh, let's apply it to our text and uh, you see you can choose a font here so let's go with something uh, nice maybe like this and uh, yes this looks really fun so let's leave it at that and uh, if you load an effector so let's go with the plain effector by default this guy will load itself here under letters tab and uh, currently it's influencing all the letters simply because it doesn't have a fall off here so if you select maybe a box fall off and uh, play with this one you can clearly see the effect so there is a big difference where you load effectors so you can also move them from within effects list where they are already added so let's say that we want to move this plain effector to affect all so you simply grab it and drag it on that tab and drop it in here one thing that you have to know is that you have to delete it from the original list otherwise you won't get the effect you want so now regardless of uh, this uh, fall off set here our guy is simply influencing the complete set of words so that's really important concept for you to understand and uh, one thing that is uh, often misunderstood is this axis guy it simply controls where is the origin of uh, of the letters and that is far more understandable if you use uh, effector on the separate letters so watch for example this guy i hope you can see these little dots those are the these axis guys and if you move this you're simply determining where is the axis of that I hope that makes sense we will right click and do a reset to default so if you want to create any type of text animation this is very very flexible and powerful tool now let's create this to be a little bit uh, more interesting so this plane effector we could leave this plane effector here and uh, I will copy it and once again I will also add it to this effects list so let's call this one visibility so we are already assuming correctly we will reveal the letters as the effector is moving so let's drop the visibility here and just to clarify why i haven't enabled visibility here the reason is because you have to change this minimum and maximum values if i change this then my letters won't go upwards once i move this effector so with this first plane effector i will move the letters okay so that works as expected but with this second guy i have to set if you remember correctly from the previous lessons this maximum value to zero and minimum to 100 percent now and only now this visibility will work we will turn off the position and use visibility only now let's test the setup and move this visibility guy and uh, now our letters will disappear so let's undo that and maybe this is a good opportunity to show you this linear mode and uh, in this linear mode the effector will reveal the letters but uh, the only problem is that you have to orient the fall off correctly so currently it's oriented towards z and uh, we have the letters aligned towards x and this is really important to understand so let's uh, hit x plus and uh, depending on the plus or minus 
the effector will reveal or hide the clone. So if I change this to X minus, now it will reveal and the letters will stay revealed accordingly. So I hope that makes sense. And whenever you want to affect to stay once it's uh, created, you would use this linear guy. I also will make this plane effector, which affects the sudden popping of the clone, so to speak, to be child of this visibility. So if I move things now, you will see the letters are kind of falling in the place. So that's really interesting effect. And of course, in MoGraph, you can stack so many effectors and various effects and utilize so many different things. And uh, let's just for fun, load also here a delay effector and uh, we'll put it to spring mode. And uh, now let's hit play and uh, move our visibility, guys. So the effector is really... This delay effector is controlling all these guys and uh, we have really nice uh, motion here. So anything that pops to your mind can be done with MoGraph. MoGraph is a fantastic tool. And uh, I'm really sure you can find uh, quite a few practical applications for your letters and logo setups and stuff like that. Let me stop this, go back and... Uh, I'll get rid of this all and we will talk about a really really special guy in MoGraph and that is this tracer object. Now this tracer guy is really something special and uh, the same goes for this mouse plan which is absolutely incredible tool as uh, you will see. This is something that will blow you away. So I'm talking about these two guys since essentially both tracer and mouse plan are just splines but really really powerful splines so let's talk about this tracer and what it does it uh, creates a spline by tracing movement of any given object so this tracer is really amazing versatile tool and can produce really spectacular results splines that are made with it are the same as any other spline and in fact since uh, tracer is a generator it can be used as a parametric spline for advanced effects. So let me just show you. I will create a simple cube here and scale it down. So let's say to 20% and you'll notice in the settings for the tracer there is a trace link. So what you want to be traced has to be dropped here. So let's drop the cube here and uh, this guy works with time. So if I press play and uh, move this cube around you will notice that I get a trail of actual real splines behind the cube. So it's tracing the movement of this cube. And it's tracing all the vertices on the cube. If I want to trace only the object, I will get a single spline. So it's basically tracing the axis of the object. Let me stop this, go back. Let's explain this tracer a bit. The first and the most obvious is this tracing mode. So it simply instructs the tracer how it will trace, in which mode it will work. And uh, there are some additional options here, which we will cover later in this lesson. And uh, let's proceed to this sample step. This really means how many points it will create per frame. So you can freely increase this uh, to something different to have a little bit more easier setup and by easier I mean uh, less amount of points on the generated splines. This trace active is uh, really self-explanatory. It uh, enables and disables the trace for anything that is inside. We talked about this trace vertices and uh, this use TP subgroups is related to thinking particles so we will not cover that at the moment and uh, here are some interesting options how the tracer will handle cloners and uh, the children of cloners. So let's take a closer look at that. For this we will obviously have to create a cloner and uh, let's drop this cube under cloner and 
now we won't trace this cube so let's delete it we will trace the cloner so that is really important for you to understand so if i press play and uh, maybe i will lock this guy so we have always these settings from tracer available so we can freely select this guy and uh, play with it in the viewport now you can see that this guy is uh, really creating splines for nodes only if i enable this trace vertices it really won't make any difference because this is currently in the nodes only mode if i change this to immediate clones then the vertices will be traced also let me stop this because this can be really heavy in a few seconds and as i was saying this will trace the immediate clones of the cloner if you have a nested cloner so cloned cloner then you will have to enable this clones of clones so lots of flexibility there for you and uh, this is the include cloner so it will also trace the cloner object itself this is the basically the transformation space where you choose how those uh, splines will be created this limit guy and uh, let's actually ease up this setup delete the cloner and uh, we'll trace this simple cube so it's much more easier on the system as i am recording also and uh, i will then explain you this uh, limit option easier so let's hit play and uh, you see it's tracing all vertices on the cube regardless of this cube being a primitive object so if you increase the segmentation and uh, move this guy the change will propagate through the tracer so it will understand that you changed the segmentation we can turn off these trace vertices and of course only single spline will be made let's stop this go back now this limit option will simply limit the duration of the spline relatively speaking so if i set this to end and uh, enter the frame amount here so let's say maybe 10 and press play and uh, move my cube you will see that uh, it won't create the complete spline it will create a spline just for 10 frames so that is really understandable at least i hope so and do understand that tracer we'll delete this cube this tracer is a spline so it's a parametric spline and uh, you can treat it as such so it will also work for example under sweep nerve so let me show you a little example where you can get a good insight what tracer can do just follow the steps now so i will create a first a uh, sweep nerves that is a generator and uh, i'll also create a profile so let's go with the circle and uh, i almost always change this to uniform from these setups and lower the amount to two also for this tracer you can choose which type of the spline will create and let's set the same thing here so let's go with the maybe cubic and let's maybe even increase this so we get uh, nice rounded shape and i will add a second spline which will actually be our path spline and uh, let's select maybe this uh, lemniscate which is uh, really cool and uh, let's also create an object let's go with a polygon maybe a triangle that uh, we will align to that spline with the cloner so we will clone it on the spline let's uh, scale it down maybe like this and uh, create a cloner and uh, we will use an object and drop our seaside spline in it and uh, let's use just one clone so because things will become more apparent then imagine that you are doing a simple sweep operation so what you would need is a profile so you have a profile this is a circle spline which we will most certainly scale down so Let's just enable the visibility so let's scale it to somewhere like uh, this and use this tracer 
as a spline. So it's a generator for the path spline. And let's give it something to trace. Let's drop this cloner inside. So it will trace the clone according to these modes here. And uh, we have the limit. So it won't create a complete spline. It will create the spline in this amount of frames. So if I hit play now, pretty much nothing will happen because this cloner, this clone is not moving. Let's give it some... Uh, value here so let's say maybe 20% of the speed and let's see the result and uh, this is what I was uh, trying to show you I will also increase the time so let's say 300 also here and right click and expand to full time let's go back we will hit play and uh, in the tracer I will increase this value to let's say 20 and uh, we will get a little bit more of a longer spline. Currently, it's behaving a little bit uh, odd because in this cloner, we can set this guy to be even. So the speed throughout the spline will be completely the same. Now, what I want to do is uh, under the sweep nerves, and this tracer is now used to generate this spline. So we can maybe scale this. Actually, I will have to reverse this sequence. So I will reverse the sequence of the spline points and uh, I can scale this to 10 and uh, we'll have some sort of uh, interesting uh, trail here. Now, nothing stops me from creating, uh, let's say, a material. I will just uh, stop this because uh, it really won't give me an option to refresh the material. And uh, let's select some interesting color, maybe this one. And uh, we will apply it to our sweep nerves. And uh, this is really useful for creating these nice uh, trailing effects. And uh, I'll just enable this square shading line so we can see this little guy little bit more clear. In fact, we can create a material for it. So let's maybe go with, uh, let's maybe go with, uh, let's say this color. Okay. And we will apply that to our cloner. So we have a green guy creating this uh, motion and the really nice trail coming out from this guy. What is important is the concept that I wanted to show you here. This tracer is now simply a spline and spline is generated from tracing this cloner. So we are tracing this guy as it goes around this spline. I hope this is uh, understandable enough because it will give you a good insight into some more advanced and complex setups that you can do with Mogra. And in fact, let's go back and uh, I will show you how you can further expand this and create far more interesting results. So let's add the effector to this. Let's go maybe with the formula effector and uh, I'll just hit play here so I have a visual feedback. Now I will enable just uh, position. So let's maybe use just uh, Y, maybe 50 will be okay. And uh, you can see how you can really align that uh, guy to uh, this seesaw spline, but also give it a behavior from this effector. You, of course, the setup is non-destructible, so you can maybe enter a little bit more of these guys here. And uh, imagine creating this by hand. This is uh, absolutely incredible. So things you can do with MoGraph are absolutely mind-blowing. So Let's stop this, go back, and uh, you can even uh, play with the rate variation so you will get some sort of a randomness, uh, maybe offset this a bit and uh, make sure if you are animating something and uh, that you will be rendering something, make sure that you start from zero so the traces can be generated properly. So how about this? Imagine airplanes on the air show. So every little of these uh, setups really has a practical application. So maybe you could
convert this is so it's applying move points and stuff like that at random effectors for colors and much much more let me stop this go back and uh, that's about it as far as this usage of uh, tracer goes let's actually get rid of everything and uh, i will show you another practical usage of uh, tracer which is a modeling helper so we could go with the matrix object so let's create a radial setup and uh, just bear with me for a second and i will show you the power of what tracer can do really quickly for you so now i have a radial matrix here so just 10 clones and the radius of 50 i will clone this so i will put the matrix under cloner maybe i will create just uh, maybe five of these guys i will get rid of the position so they're currently all in the same space to resolve this i will create a step effector and uh, maybe i will reset this spline so we have a really a gradual transition that is uh, really linear and uh, now i will create a tracer so also i will deselect everything because if anything is selected it will trace what was selected once the tracer was called from the mograph menu we will use this tracer in a different mode so we will use it to connect all these matrices here so if I drop my cloner here and instruct it to connect all objects, it will do so. But uh, since we are using cloner, we have to set this to immediate of clone. So this is the result. It connected all these clones with the spline. Of course, this setup is uh, really non-destructible. So you can play with the settings of on any of these guys and uh, get the results you want but also once you select this guy and hit c you will be left with the spline so if i really took the effort i could have created maybe a spider web so things that are really really difficult to create with splines in a regular mode so this tracer which is simply awesome can help you create things that are very difficult to achieve otherwise so multiple applications very powerful tool as you will see in later lessons once we hit mini projects okay that's it as uh, far as the tracer goes now i'll talk about this extrude and poly fx because i want to leave this most spline as the last guy before we start with our mini projects this mo spline is uh, really really fantastic and there is nothing like it available out there so we will cover that after these two guys okay so let's proceed to our next lesson